So now we're, we're kind of moving back to the original ideas that guitar players have where we're memorizing a shape on the guitar. The difference is, is I want you to be visualizing these notes and not only those notes, but the intervals. C to D is a whole step, D to E is a whole step, E to F is a half step. And it's kind of hard to see when I move from the sixth string to the fifth string, but if I look at it as this, E to F, right there, I can see that half step right there. You see? So that's our half step. So we have one, two, three, four, there's your half step, five, six, and then seven, and then eight. There's our half step. Now the point I'm doing here is, is because we're going to take that scale that we just played and we're going to move that down to G at the third fret of the sixth string. Now you might have done this before, you might not, but if you've done it before, you already know that you can move that scale around, that scale shape that, that I'm playing right now, but now you know why because it has to mirror the same thing as the key of C. So my notes now are G, A, B, C, there's my half step, D, E, F sharp, G. And if you've been working on the chromatic elements from the first video, you can already see those notes on your guitar. That's the beautiful thing about this is it all overlaps. It's not just book theory, although that is, that is important, the fundamental aspect of it, the whiteboard theory, if you will. But then you gotta take that sucker and you gotta move it to your guitar. You gotta start making it make sense, okay? So the point I'm trying to make here is you can see how because the half steps and whole step configuration is the same, when I go to play it on my guitar, the shape is the same, okay? It looks exactly the same. <laughs> I can be in any key. It doesn't make any difference. The shape is going to be the same. So let's keep going for a minute here. I want to show you a couple more here. Put this together. So now we're going to do the key of, let's just do the key of D, for instance. So I'm going to put D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and D. Okay. Then I'm going to put my half steps in. You know, it's funny because when I was in, in, I think it was my sophomore year, my professor, my college professor, he goes, don't ever forget to put those half steps in, put those arrows in. He goes, you're going to make so many mistakes if you don't put them in. And ever since then, I have always put these arrows between three and four and seven and eight, ever since that, that, uh, that class when he told me to do that. So it makes it easy to see. I, my eyes gravitate to it. I can see there's a problem here because this should be a half step and it's a whole step. And this right here should be a half step and it's a whole step. So I got all kinds of problems. But again, and just instead of just jumping to conclusions, I want to start at the beginning and work my way across. So D to E is a whole step like we want. E to F is only a half step, so we're going to raise that up. Now we got a whole step, which fixes this side. That's a half step. G to A is a whole. A to B is a whole. B to C is only a half, but if we bump that up, we got our whole step to our half step. The key of D has two sharps, and that's why. Okay? Not trying to bore you. Let's keep going. Okay? And if you got a piece of paper or, and a pencil, you should grab that and start writing this down. Learn how to do this. I used to have my students do all of the keys like this. So let's do the key of A. We'll bump this up a little bit. Okay, we got our half steps. We're going to put those in. Grab my colorful red marker here. And again, we can see by looking at those half steps, we got issues. This isn't right, and that's not right. So let's fix it. Let's start from left to right. A to B, is that correct? And the answer is yes, it's a whole step, just like we want, just like everybody else has. B to C, is that a whole step? And the answer is no. So we need to make the B to C, C sharp. Now B to C sharp is a whole step. C sharp to D is the half step that we're looking for. D to E, is that a whole step? And the answer is yes. E to F, is that a whole step? Like all the other ones, and the answer is no. So we have to change it to F sharp. F sharp to G, is that a whole step like we want? And the answer is no. So we gotta fix that too. F sharp to G sharp is a whole step, and then G sharp to A then, is the half step that we want. So you can see as we keep going, you wind up with more and more sharps. You wind up with more problems that need to be fixed. Now, before I let you go, 
Uh, next time, the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to start learning about triads and how triads work. Um, what I'd like you to do right now is I'd like you to focus on two things. Try these out in various keys. Try the key of F and the key of A and the key of G and the key of C and the key of D, the key of E, whatever, right? And study those. See the similarities. Begin to understand the communication between all of these different scales and how they're all really the same thing. We're just readjusting the problems to make it all mirror the key of C. Um, so the last one I want to give you, just so you can see how this works, we're going to do the key of F. So F, G, A, B, C, D, E, and F. It's kind of hard to write at an angle like that. Okay. Now we throw in our little arrow. There we go. Beautiful. Now, at first glance, this is wrong, this is right. A to B is wrong, E to F is right. First glance, we throw a sharp on the F. That's the first glance that everybody does. But let's actually look further into this and work left to right like we're supposed to be doing. So F to G is a whole step. It's fine. G to A is a whole step. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. A to B is a whole step, and we need it to be a half step. Do you see what the problem is? Okay. The problem is that you can't change A to A sharp to fix this problem. Because if you move A sharp, A to A sharp, G to A is wrong then. You can't do that. The only thing you can do is in this case, you have to bump the B backwards. F to G was fine. We can't change it. G to A was fine. We can't change it. A to B was wrong. So we make that B flat, which in turn then makes B flat to C a whole step like we want. C to D a whole step. D to E a whole step. E to F a half step. So in the first video, we were discussing the chromatic scale and the fact that you get sharps. And then again, a question I always get is, well, why do you call them sharps? Well, I mean, what about flats? And we learned that a sharp and a flat, like A sharp and B flat, are actually the same note. They're just called an enharmonic. You have two different names for the same note or same pitch. But I did mention to you that as you keep learning your theory, you're going to start realizing why you get two different names. And this is why. Okay, and this might further explain to you too why if you were a piano player or a clarinet player or something like that, how you would refer to it as B flat. Whereas a guitar player a lot of times, because we don't know our theory, we just call everything sharp. We just say A sharp. And then other musicians might look and go, well, why are you calling it A sharp? It's because in their usual theory language, you don't really come across A sharp, but you do come across B flat a lot, as you can see right here in the key of F. Okay, we can't call this A sharp. We can't have A and A sharp, even though in theory it does make sense, but it doesn't make sense on paper. We have to call it B flat. So the key of F gets one flat, which is B flat. Okay, so I hope that helps you a little bit. Remember, the key here is, is watch this video as, you, as much as you need to to absorb this concept. This is really, really important for you to learn. If you really want to start tackling how things work on the fretboard, and I strongly encourage you to do so because it's so enlightening to be able to freely understand what's actually happening on your fretboard as opposed to just always relying on shapes that don't really make any sort of sense. And again, don't get me wrong, we all do it. I, I started there too. That's exactly what I did. Learned how to play scales and chords and really didn't understand how anything worked. But it always just seemed like my playing especially my soloing, especially my songwriting was lacking things because I really didn't understand how things actually tether together. So that's the whole point of theory, okay?